Hi everyone, bonjour and welcome back to my channel. For this video I wanted to go through some of the principles I've developed as part of my minimalist journey. When you start working towards a more minimalist lifestyle regarding your things, you kind of naturally start to assess and reevaluate what is important to you about the things you already own and also what's important to you next time you bring something in. And one of the values I've realized that are kind of important to me or that I have developed as a result of having less stuff is keeping it classy. If you are here for the first time, hello, I'm Naya and this is my channel where I talk about style and beauty from a minimalist perspective. So if that is your thing, you've come to the right place. And as for some of the principles, rules and guidelines that I've created for myself, these are the ones that I consider of the classy tribe. And although I think that these can apply to a lot of your belongings, these are definitely more focused on the wardrobe side of things for the most part. The first classy principle that I try to stand by is to take ownership over your things. Nowadays, so many things are so cheap, including clothing. And I think it's very easy to sort of like not develop a relationship with the thing you have. Things are less expensive, more readily available and because of that, I think that often the items we buy or have are of pretty low perceived value to us. But when you start going about things in a more minimalist way, and for my case, uh, buying higher end items, I think it's really important that you take some ownership over your things. This means tailoring the things that you have and like so that they fit you perfectly if they don't already. It also means repairing things whenever possible, whenever things uh, break or get damaged. If you have something and it breaks and you're not really interested or you wouldn't put any money whatsoever into repairing it, you probably don't care about that item and it's really difficult to take ownership over it. When we assess what we like and as a result we bring in uh, fewer things and we spend more time making the decision so that whenever we bring something in it's more important to us. It's also likely that that's going to be something that is going to stick around for longer. You're probably going to get a lot more wear out of it and that sort of also means it's going to help manifest your personal style. When we get a lot of new things and are sort of indifferent to our things and are always ready to just bring something more in, it's very very difficult to sort of manifest and develop a true personal style because if your style is not consistent. Your style just never sort of develop in the same way because if you're always wearing something new or something you're indifferent to, it's really difficult to develop the consistency that personal style needs to basically even exist. Obviously personal style starts in your head with what you like but after that it becomes the signal you're giving or the clothes that you're actually wearing and so if you're always wearing something new and rarely wearing something that you absolutely enjoy and take full ownership of then your personal style with exist uh, less and manifest less and it won't be as obvious to the people around you what you're all about. The next classy principle that I like to stick by is to buy your art from artists or secondhand stores. And an underpoint to this is sort of to buy custom made things whenever you can, for example, on Etsy. Whenever I add something to my collection of belongings, uh, especially if it's something which only purpose is to look nice, I think that it can be really important to get something from artists. Just in general, when you can get something with creative integrity and with authenticity, I think for uh, a lot of people and for me, it's going to create a different vibe or a different feel owning that item than if you bring something in and put your money just uh, in people's hands who are doing nothing but just trying to make money. For example, if you're looking for a poster, there you can go on one of these really large poster sites, but you can also go to a secondhand store and see if you can find a more unique, really interesting poster. You can also go on Etsy to look up your type of favorite artwork because the people who are selling their own art are likely doing that because they really love to do that and they consider themselves artist but it's really hard to make a living is as an artist for a lot of people and here we are with these like big stores like you go to ikea and get all your decorative items where it just 
holds absolutely no authenticity most of the time. So whenever I bring in some sort of decorative item, I've started to give more thought to where that comes from. For the point of clothing, I have recently myself started to get into uh, buying linen pieces on Etsy. These are also generally going to be obviously smaller shops and most things are made handmade, which means that they can also tailor make the things that you are interested in to fit your exact measurements. And most of the time, this is really nice. And obviously, while it won't be fast fashion prices, it's really not that pricey for what you're getting. And what I've gotten so far, the quality have been amazing. So looking into where you can buy whatever it is you're looking for, handmade or made with some sort of creativity or authenticity. I want to support someone who really cares about the craft that they're making um, rather than just necessarily a big corporation. Whenever I can and want and have the time to look into that, I think it's a classy principle. The next classy principle that I also like to follow to a certain degree is to buy things antique or second hand. Here I don't necessarily mean that you need to go into your local Goodwill and buy all your basics from there, but to sometimes buy things that have a history before it reached you and that didn't necessarily have to be made for you so that you can buy it. I think there's also some sort of authenticity and classiness to that. So now I know I said you don't have to go into your Goodwill and get all your basics, but doing stuff like going into your local Goodwill or whatever you call it, wherever you live here in Switzerland, it would be a bulky. And sometimes look for maybe the jewelry section or look for a scarf or just whatever it is you're looking for. Sometimes having a look at a secondhand store means that you will get something that is so much more intricate and interesting than what you would have found if you had bought it from new. And for me, it sort of adds a little bit of unexplainable magic to my look or my belongings. For me, this doesn't really count for everything. I don't necessarily feel like if I buy pants and they're secondhand, that's magic. But for me, this works for certain decorative items and it would also work for jewelry. My next principle that I like to and try as hard to as possible to stick to is to never keep anything that you are at all unsure about. I talk about variations of this principle all the time, but I just think it is so important and it's sort of like the stepping stone of a lot of the other things that I think is important. Whenever you go out and buy anything, in this instance, clothing, if you get that item with you home and regardless of whether it was because you made an impulse decision or you maybe didn't think it through or just kind of changing your mind when you get home, when you put that article of clothing on yourself and there's something about it that's not quite right, or if you're in any way in doubt whether or not you're gonna enjoy this item, try your best to return that thing. Because if you are in doubt, it's a huge indicator that you probably won't enjoy it. If you're in doubt right now whether you want to wear it or not, you're probably gonna be in doubt the next 30 times as well and chances are if you have clothing you love already you would rather be wearing some of that so for the sake of your wallet and the planet just return that item just take it back and to the store when you keep something you are uncertain about it's very very difficult to take full ownership about that item because if it sticks around and you find you don't really wear it or doesn't really fit in chances are some sort of guilt or shame are going to be attached to that item and that's not gonna spark much joy if we're talking about it Marie Kondo style. A lot of things about the relationship between you and your items are going to be about perceived value. And if you bring something in and you're not really certain about it, the value of that item is just gonna be less to you than something else you have in your closet that you love. To give an example from my own life, I no longer shop from fast fashion. Fast fashion is of really low perceived value to me. So even if I find something I really think is gorgeous in a fast fashion store or for some reason I see it on someone or it's on a mannequin when I walk by, I know that there is no point because even if I think it looks pretty here and now, I know that this item is of really low perceived value to me because it comes from a fast fashion store. And so there's no point in even trying because I will never take full confident ownership over that item. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I know 
Also because it really does help out my small channel. And if you're here for the first time and not already subscribed, then consider doing that because I would love to keep you around. Thanks for watching and file. Thank you.